Hi, this is Shadi and today I want to talk about Judo in the context of self-defense and police work um, and specifically talk about the kata, the self-defense kata and it is the Kodokan Goshin Jutsu. Now, the Kodokan Goshin Jutsu is actually very recent. It was developed uh, in the Kodokan in 1956 because it was a way of, you know, uh, doing self-defense in a more modern way using modern weapons like the like the stick uh, or the bat, the pistol and the knife stuff that they use in their era and our era as well. Um, unlike the Kime no Kata, which is an ancient uh, kata used for self-defense, which had swords and uh, you know the staff, which is different and far more traditional and stuff that we don't use as weapons anymore. So it was kind of like a modern rendition to self-defense and it's being taught to the police. Um, and what's interesting about this kata is that they have a lot of techniques that are very in common with judo, like uh, the wrist twist, the wrist lock, um, elbow pins, etc. You know, the nikyo, kotegeishi, um, e uh, Ikyo, Nikyo, etc. Um, but, you know, we all know that Aikido is barely effective. So how come it works in Judo? How, like we saw the police throw the rioter, but not in Aikido. Well, it's very simple, actually. Um, me speaking from personal experience, um, when I would do Aikido and spar with someone who is trained, the first thing I would feel is sheer panic and sheer stress and fear. And that uh, makes me forget everything I know. And that's why something like Aikido or only drilling techniques will not save you. That's why sparring is very essential because when you get accustomed to everything that's stressful and you know when you know you feel like you're going to war, then when you become cool under pressure, quote unquote, then you will become more strategic and you know what to do and what to think and what techniques to use. And that's why I believe that sparring in judo can result in good kata application in real life where it comes to the police or self-defense in general. Um, another thing about judo and self-defense is that a lot of people are quick to say that with modern rules like leg grabs and uh, double leg takedowns being banned and all that makes judo somehow like quote unquote olympic and like a soft judo and i don't necessarily agree with it um, now are you taking the art back backwards when you you know take away leg grabs and you know pants grabbing etc Yes, but to the extent of making it useless, mm, let's see. In judo, do you still have to control your opponent's posture and body before you throw them or control them? Yes. Are you sparring against a very highly resisting opponent? Yes. Are you experiencing pressure testing? Yes. Are you throwing someone that's trying to throw you Yes. Are you submitting someone that's trying to submit you? Yes. Uh, are you controlling someone's posture that's trying to assault you? Yes. So when it comes to the standards of self-defense, judo absolutely does work. Now, if you're a policeman or in the army, your instructor is not going to tell you leg grabs are banned. Now, that would be silly. It's not a competition, but all the basics when it comes to grip fighting, how to hold someone, clinching them uh, on the ground to pin them, the basics like side control, side headlock, north-south, mount, all this stuff that you see in Katame no Kata or Osaikomi Waza, the pinning techniques, are all judo and are all legal and they are still being practiced till this day. So saying stuff like Olympic judo doesn't work is ludicrous. Now, is it perfect? No. 
is any system perfect? No. Uh, I get mauled in Jiu Jitsu, but when I throw them, I throw them, like I just pick a technique and just throw them with it. That's their biggest weakness, for example. If, but if they have a wrestling background, then no. For example, nobody says um, Greco-Roman wrestling doesn't work. Greco-Roman wrestling is like freestyle wrestling, but you cannot grab the legs and you cannot even attack with your legs. For example, leg sweeps and tripping someone, etc. All this stuff is banned. You can only touch from the waist up. But you see these ferocious suplexes and hip tosses. It still works. It's still very lethal and very dangerous. And judo is the same thing. Now, this is when it comes to self-defense. Now, let's talk about the police. I know there's a lot of controversy and stigma um, when it comes to the police. Uh, a lot of people have uh, good things to say. A lot of people have bad things to say. And there's one man that came and, you know, cleared this up very well. And I agree with them 100%. Henry Gracie said that the reason why there is violence and deaths, etc., uh, when it comes to arrest and interacting with criminals or outlaws with the police is the lack of training. The more you can control, uh, the more you are trained, etc., the more you can neutralize the situation quickly, the less damage there will be done for the police and for the assailant. And I agree 100%. The more you lack training, the more you panic, the more you're scared, and the more you are more likely to use excessive force and sadly kill someone. And this is what is happening. You see Henry Gracie training the police when it comes to uh, groundwork, how to contain them, uh, not let them reach their gun, escape, etc and also using clinching and takedowns if he's running after someone. And I truly appreciate what Hannah Gracie is doing for all, not only the safety of the community and the policemen, but also to remove this bad stigma because, you know, a lot of people have created this image that, you know, a lot of them are just out there to, to be corrupted and create problems and just flat out hurt people. but. When you're working with criminals all day, I mean, you're not going to be a very calm person. You're going to be very on high alert and very explosive in your reactions. And this is sadly what's happening. Um, and this kata is designed for the police when it comes to standing. And we saw in the beginning uh, how that, you know, rioter tried to hit with like an upright shomenuchi, like an Aikido. And he threw with the Ippon Seonage stuff you see in the first kata you learn in Judo, the Nage no kata. Um, it was being done by a policeman, so it's a kata, but it was very well fluently executed on the streets because I'm sure that policemen have sparred many times in the police academy. And keep in mind, Judo first gained popularity in 1886 when they won the police uh, entrance exam. So or competition to choose whether they would go with, you know, Totsuka has Jiu-Jitsu or Kodokan Judo. Um, I talked about this in an older video and this is what I wanted to say mainly. When it comes to self-defense, you still have the elements of body control, posture control, and also life resistance. Uh, stand up and also on the ground. And when it comes to the police, you know, like I said, control is very important and Henner is, or the Gracie Academy is working on that. And the more training you have, the less crimes or deaths or um, unfortunate brutality needs, le happens way less. And that's, this is what it's needed because uh, the policeman needs to be confident in their training and also the community needs to stay safe and crime, unfortunately, in our system will always exist so that's a good thing also to look at when it comes to the police and also trying to remove the stigma because a lot of good people yes there are bad people in the police but a lot of good people have families 
um, children, etc. But also there are policemen. Not everyone is out to, uh, you know, being a corrupt human being and join the police. That's just not how it works. Um, so that's it. I just want to touch on these two subjects, uh, self-defense and police, because they're very important. Uh, competition isn't everything. Uh, this was Shadi and thank you for listening.